Hello, everyone. Welcome to uh, Corona uh, Virus and NLP Day 11, I think it is now. And uh, I've got two fantastic guests uh, with me. I've got uh, Llewellyn and Reese Davis, uh, the terrible twins. Uh, I can confirm that they are absolute monsters in the gym. Uh, in fact, on Christmas Day, I wasn't able to even wash my hair because I couldn't get my hands above my head. Thanks, guys. Uh, and that was for a so back workout, right? <laughs> and they're from uh, Champions of Mind. And I've invited them along to, to share with us um, their wisdom uh, as far as you know, what we can do um, during this time of global uncertainty where a lot of people are experiencing anxiety and fear and panic not only to kind of like stabilize ourselves and ground ourselves, but actually be able to, during this time, and who knows how, how long that time can be, how we can actually grow both personally, professionally, uh, and financially. I know these guys have got some great material to actually uh, share with you because they're phenomenal coaches. So welcome, guys. Thank you, welcome. Dave. Thank you, David. Thanks for having us. We appreciate it. That's very pleasure. grateful, you. Dave, to, for you to have us on your show, my friend. No, oh, thank you for thank you for uh, for, for joining me. The, I love these ones with the uh, uh, with our guests, and I know that, that uh, people watching them um, love it too. Uh, as you probably know, it goes out live on on Facebook, seven pm each evening. But it also goes out on LinkedIn. It also goes out on Reddit. It goes out on, on YouTube and all manner of other places too. So uh, we'll get some we'll get some good views. So. Um, What's your perspective at the moment about, you know, what's going on in the world in general, what's going on in the UK? Uh, and what can people um, do about that? You know, what, what, what specific action, what, what, let's, let's break it down into a couple of things, you know, like uh, what can we do emotionally, what can we do mentally, what can we do physically? Uh, so I'll, stay, I'll, go, I'll go straight into it. First of all, I want to say um, thank you everyone for watching this. Me and my brother are going to give you extreme amounts of actionable content to make you feel a lot more upbeat, a lot more focused and a lot more objective <clears throat> during this time of uncertainty. Before we go into any content, I just basically want to explain. For the first time in my life in 36 years, I feel like we have now all collectively come together because we're all facing a very genuine uncertain time. What I want to ask all of our viewers to do today, though, is not personalize the situation based on your previous circumstance, but understand now that the slate is being wiped clean for us all to progress out of this collectively and as individuals. What I think is really cool is, as individuals, we tend to celebrate other people's hardship. So if we're listening to Les Brown, Brenda Bashad, Eric Thomas, Grant Cardone, Gary Vaynerchuk, Tony Robbins, we, we take so much pride in listening to how they overcome it. But from my personal perspective, Dave, you know, the universe has now given everyone equal amount of adversity and has given us an equal amount of opportunity to rise collectively together so we no longer have to celebrate other people's hardship. It's given us an opportunity to celebrate our own. And, and that excites me because now information is irrelevant. As I was telling you before we got on live, right? Yeah. It's now giving people two variables that they can work with. It's number one, time, because everyone's self-isolating. And number two, it's your ability to apply what you already know. Yes. Yeah. Um, you know, I know so many people that have, have studied you know, like NLP, timeline therapy, mental emotions, <coughs> hypnosis, HUNA, and... <clears throat> And you know they get home and they put the manual on the on the shelf, yeah. and it, and it's and it's it's just there, you know. Because I've been sharing stuff um, over the last couple of weeks. It's very basic stuff, you know. Yeah. Because uh, it's the basic stuff. It's the simple stuff that gets the best results. The people yeah. go, "Wow, I've never agree. thought about that before." Go, what do you mean? I haven't thought about it before. You were sat in front of me like, just a couple of weeks ago learning it, you know. But I, I think you I think you're right there as far as like. It, you know what's going on doesn't discriminate um it, it literally has leveled everybody's playing field so yeah, it has yeah. to be, and we are kind of like in an unprecedented opportunity as you mentioned to really take some yeah. major leaps forward at this particular point in time but and though <clears throat> i think the other thing that i like about what you said is together yeah together. 
Louis, let me just take over for one second, right? The, the only reason, David, right, people are not seeing this as an opportunity, and some people are afraid to use the word opportunity in COVID in the same sentence, right? Yeah. Is because they're, they're in survival mode, and they're in victim mentality. And this prevents people from, like yourself, I've been watching you every day, going live, front-loading value, right? Can you imagine if every single influencer did that? The world will become a less anxious place, right? But yep. people are now are operating from a fearful standpoint. So rather than being innovative, creative, solution focused, a lot of people are now just extremely fearful and they forgot everything that's brought them to this point in life. So we have and to remember this, right? The two angles of this whole situation, there's two angles. One is health and one is wealth, finances. We can do everything that we can as individuals to make sure that we don't contract and get this disease. Um, if we get it, we get it. We can only do what we can do. Mm -hmm. What I want everyone watching this video to understand is this. We're, we are being shown that money itself actually has no value because at the drop of a hat, the flip of a coin, a situation can occur and we can lose our wealth, all of us, even us. So I'm asking all of my students personally and privately is to, in this time of diversity, invest in themselves and become the value. So yeah. if I go bankrupt during COVID-19, Louis Davis knows how to accumulate wealth based on the perceptions, beliefs and values that I've accumulated through adverse times. I'm not the most intelligent coach in the world, but I have a resilience that will match any world-class coach in the world. And this is what we want the viewers to do during this time. The health thing you can take care of. Do everything that you're told to do. The wealth thing, you now have to internalize and use this as a time and a place to become a valuable human being. And so what do you think of some specific steps that people can do that to increase their own personal value? Really, really, really easy. This is a Louis Davis special, okay? Every single morning, you employ the three character traits that you need to go to sleep feeling amazing regardless. Every morning, you employ. You employ it, you bring them on, you act as if. The three right. fundamental character traits that you need to get through the day, i.e., God forbid, I'll be extreme for the sake of the viewers, my mother dies. But if I've woke up and I've employed um, an understanding of mindset resilience, regardless, I've been consciously equipped to myself for that event. Assertive behavior. I get um, into a business confrontation in a professional manner with someone that, and I have to be assertive. If I've employed that character trait, and first thing in the morning, I won't be thrown off during the meeting and I can execute on my objective for the meeting. This is what we say to absolutely everyone. Don't wake up on autopilot because then you're at the mercy of emotion based on what you receive. And if Louis, you... let, let, let me just join you on that and put a bit of context behind it. You know, sometimes, David, you have to genuinely force growth. Yes. Because if you're waiting for information to sew everything together as an adhesive, you'll be waiting forever. Yeah. So what Lou is really saying is, you know, with outcome thinking, who do you have to become? And you have to be that person way before you become it. Yes. And you have to be prepared to feel really uncomfortable. And you are going to feel like you're almost lying to yourself because you're not that person. But as long as it's positive and it's productive, it gives you a room to grow into becoming that person that can deal with this le level of adversity. Because without that framework and without that, without that pinnacle, without wanting to reach that pinnacle, you're just going to struggle forever. Yeah. Yeah, it's kind of like um, the thing I'm reminded about <clears throat> is the, the, the be, do and have idea. Yeah. You know, before you can have, you've got to do. Before you can do, you've got to be. Yeah. So it's kind of like backtracking that. So it's kind of like, so what would you, so that you could have, like, like you say, Lula, like so you can have a really good night's sleep tonight, what would you need to do during the day to be able to have that at night? And very, very, very simple. So um, my biggest understanding from a personal perspective is we're at the mercy of emotion if we don't know to control it first thing in the morning so myself and reese employ something called state changing cardio we get everyone up first thing in the morning and before you switch on the news before you open your emails you do some level of exercise to release endorphins so that you embody a state okay, and a okay. focus of a winner 
That's the first thing. I don't like to give people too many more action steps for the first two to three weeks of being mentored or coach because that surge of endorphins first thing in the morning is enough to take them off the face of a hill anyway. I ask them to try to maintain the state of focus and self-worth off the back of that exercise throughout the day. Then at week two or week three, I then come in with um, systematic steps to increase that if that makes sense mm -hmm. and, and and to couple that david right i'm going to have a very hands-on approach is that i teach people not to run away from what it is they're feeling or experiencing and learn how to embrace it because a lot of people right they literally spend 60 to 70 years of their life trying not to be anxious trying right. not to be sad and you know what if all therapy fails and it's with you for the rest of your life what are you going to do and you know, for, for myself, you know, I've served in the military, the Grenadier Guards, 1st Battalion, and I've dealt with anxiety. I've da dealt with things that not many people could deal with. And I got bored of running away from it. So how I sleep relaxed and soundly at night in the evening is just embracing all the negative, em the negative emotions that I feel as much as the positive. Because yeah. when you don't put a magnifying glass over them, they become irrelevant. Right. But but I, I really do want to underline what we said, though. When we first get up, we must change our state. Yeah. You can't go from eight hours of sleep to waking up and forgetting what's going on around you. We must manipulate our own mindsets before we do anything. Because if you give someone a coaching strategy, you talk about perceptual positioning with COVID. If you haven't released those endorphins, you're going to think about that new yeah. perspective as the person that's still fearful. The outcome is not going to be as good. So state changing first thing in the morning, whether it's press up, star jumps, a walk, a run, is absolutely fundamental to all human beings. I'm a big advocate of that. Yeah, or even the workout that I you know, did in my Facebook Live last night. I loved it. 10, 15 minutes, real simple. Anybody can do it. Real simple, real effective. But the simple fact that endorphins get released in your body, you know yourself, Dave, your internal language patterns completely change. Yeah, totally. You stop asking yourself questions, you start telling yourself answers. And that's what I love, just 15 minutes like you did yesterday. And it can change an awful lot. And you go from sitting on a pity party to becoming a person of strength and courage, which is what me and my brother are huge advocates on. Yeah, and I mean, you know, when we went to um, the, the gym up in uh, St. Albans, we always did it as being the very first thing that we did. Yeah. You know, yeah. Uh, and I always do that because otherwise, what is, because you get the hit of the endorphins first thing in the morning, which changes your, changes your state, gets you ready for the day. But equally, if you go, I'll do my workout when, when never arrives. Of course, that's exactly. it. So I just like to go, okay, that's done now. I don't have to think about that now. I just get on with other things. Yeah. And do you, know, do you know I highlighted the fact that if I wake up, I employ the three character traits that are needed to give me the, um, the outcome that I want for that day. Those character traits can change based on what I've got to get through for that day. I may just need one of those character traits. Therefore, I go to sleep feeling completely and utterly fulfilled. I feel like I've got energy spare and I haven't utilized everything that I thought I had to. So it's, an, it's what we frame as an easy day. Uh, and what I've always found interesting, David, about me and my brother having this strategy in regards to how we teach people and coach people it, is that if you get a job role, everyone thinks about who do I need to become to fulfill this role? What do I need to wear? How do I need to speak? What body language do I need to convey? But no one ever thinks about it from a personal economy standpoint. Right, interesting. Very interesting, man. And now the time, you know, everyone's in isolation. You don't have to go and impress your boss or your manager or all your colleagues. You have to impress yourself. Right. So let's internalize that thought process and think, how do I impress myself? How do I grow into becoming a person deserving of that next level during this pandemic? Yeah. Does that make sense? Yeah. No, totally. So let me just uh, sum up from that. So first thing is... First thing you do, get out of bed. Before you, before you look at your phone, your iPad, the news, or whatever, get yourself into a good state. And the, obviously, the quickest way of changing your state is through physiology and, and working. Yep. Yeah. Um, yep. <clears throat> then, what you're talking about is, right, so what do I need to do today so that I can go to bed and have a really, and go to bed fulfilled, 
and have a really good night's sleep. Right, what do I need to do that? What are the three character traits that I need yeah. to do? And you know, you use the term act as if you have them, you know? Yes. Maybe they are character traits you have, or maybe, maybe they're not. <clears throat> but the power of acting as if, in my experience, is huge. Yes. Um, because if you didn't have it within you, you wouldn't be able to act as if you did. As exactly that. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. you. <laughs> Impossible. So, if, you know, acting as if doesn't really exist if you think about it. Because if you, no, yes, no, you, act, you act as if you've got it, you've got it, right? Exactly that. But do you know what I love about what you just said? That's how we have to communicate it so people act upon it. Yep. Because if you tell them they've already got it, they're going to go straight away. I haven't. I can't well, do that. Well, just act in yeah, this. yeah, yeah. Flight mode. Okay, I can do that. Yeah. Can you act as if you've got it? Oh, yeah, I have. But I haven't. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> it's, uh, it's a frame I use a lot. It comes from uh, Dave Elman hypnosis. And Dave Elman would say, you know, pretend you're in trance, knowing full well that you know that you're not. Yeah. Yeah. So, in a nutshell, pretend you're confident, and, 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 and they are. well that you're not, but just pretend yeah. you're confident. And we all used yeah. to pretend yeah. when we were kids, and we go through that overrated process of growing up, and of yeah, course, I get it. and stop pretending. And then, uh, then Reece, you, you got there. Then I like that one, which was, you know, you're we're on lockdown. Um, you know, you're in isolation. There's nobody for you to impress. Except and, and I think in the mirror. Yeah, and I think the beautiful thing about it is, Dave, in all honesty, it's, it's a time where people cannot lie to themselves. It's you, you're, you're by yourself and you're with your family. And I just see it as a tremendous opportunity to literally learn as much as you can about yourself and your family. And there's going to be an awful lot of things that you don't want to confront. And there's going to be an awful lot of situations that people are in now that's making them sad and upset. But I genuinely think that if you can confront these correctly with the right frame of mind and have the right conversations with yourself and the people in your family, your, your life will change. And I'm going to give you a personal example. My relationship's been on the rocks, David, over the last six months. And isolation has categorically brought us all together stronger than ever. Right. Because I've been mindful to utilize this time we're all under the same roof. Yeah, I mean, it's like I was um, uh, coming with somebody else was, um, uh, was saying, I think it might have been Jesson, um, in the, you know, before this happened, we all had almost like r ritualistic distractions. Yes. So, you know, we'd go out to work, we'd go out with friends, we'd go out for dinner, we'd do whatever. And suddenly all the distractions are gone. And now it's kind of like you're, you're here. And a lot of people are like, oh, you know, being with this person, being with my family 24 hours a day is making me blah. No, it was there already. Yeah. Yes. You were just burying it. You were yes. seeing it with distractions. And, you know, it's interesting, the, um, uh, you know, because I've just come back from, uh, from Hawaii, you know, teaching Huna. And, you know, in, in, not only in Hawaii, but, but anywhere, people used to live in, you know, they lived in a, in a group that was isolated. And, and if there was a, if there was, if people had a problem, or in Hawaii, and if, if, if you weren't pono with somebody, then what you'd do is you'd go up and tell them that you weren't pono with them. And you'd have a discussion about it until you got pono. Yeah. Um, in the North American Indian tradition, that was the tradition of the peace pipe. Yeah. As long as you're holding the pipe, you can talk. And nobody else is allowed to talk. Then when you finish saying what you need to say, you give it to somebody else. Oh, really? Yeah. And then they can talk. And you keep going around until everybody's done and everybody's okay again. And what, what I like about that, my friend, is you're confronting every issue verbally and there's nowhere to run and there's no external distraction which i enjoy which brings on to one thing that i really wanted to communicate um using this opportunity is i get an awful lot of people reach out to me probably about 50 to 100 a day saying reese how do you deal with the news right. and i say very simply i don't watch it there's yeah. nothing to deal with if you don't watch it right yeah. because the thing is this brother 
once you you know yourself right once you consume a bit of information that doesn't serve you you internalize it it then turns into negative dialogue which affects your physiology then how you apply yourself and indeed the energy and aura which you admit right yep. so what i would like to say to people is this if you are struggling emotionally during covid19 do what i've done Delete YouTube off your phone so you're no longer searching COVID-19 conspiracy, right? <laughs> if you are going to watch the news, only choose when you watch it. So I will watch the news for 30 minutes at 10 o'clock. On your turn. Uh, I will not watch it throughout the day. Yeah. I also have deleted every single person off Facebook who has an opinion of COVID-19 because I'm too busy focusing on my emotional state and my client's emotional state and they seem very simple simple steps but they're not that simple if you actually go and delete them off now because that takes effort and yeah. i'd love to get people's feedback once i've done that because you feel david like there's a massive load that's come off your shoulders because you're no longer consumed by negative media negative information that may not serve us yeah. And can I add something to everyone that's at home watching this video? If you find yourself emotionally unstable, there's been a lot of talk about the word mental health during COVID-19 because we've got more time on our hands and people are um, experiencing feelings of anxiety and depression. We've lived what I call a fraudulent existence for many years. And what I mean a fraudulent existence, we haven't been able to live in our purest form because the focus has been on money. The focus has been on getting ahead. The focus has been being able to feed the children. Now, we are all going through the same situation and we're forced to address our own self and our own thoughts without all the noise. A lot of people are going to get their wages um, taken care of. I hope a lot of people are going to have just enough money to scrape by until we're up and running again. Just use it as a time to really reassess, really reevaluate your perspective on yourself and in life. Have you spent the last 10 to 15 years adding massive value to your boss's dream and not executing on yours? Right. If so, in times of hardship and you don't actually have enough to survive and live, is it on you or your boss? because your boss executed on their dream, you've now got to realize that you've got to do the same to create any level of independence. So I just want to say to people that are watching this video now and perceive this in the correct way, if you get through this the correct way, you become a valuable human being. It's a transition that every single human in the world is going through. And I believe at the end of it, you'll be worth so much more emotionally, physically, and financially. So battle those thoughts that you're having, but understand they're completely natural. Because myself, David, and Reese are all being forced to reassess what yep. we've done previously during this time. Absolutely. Absolutely. Guys, that's been fantastic, you, um, uh, you being, being here um, this evening. Loved it, as usual. Uh, I'll, uh, please, everybody, uh, put, your, put your comments below, your questions for anything that uh, Louis or Reese have, have said as ideas. Put those in there. Obviously, they'll be able to. You'll, they'll be able to see those questions. They can reply directly, uh, directly to you. I'm going to tag them into the into the post anyway, so that you know where they are on both uh, LinkedIn and on on Facebook. Um, and uh, you know, as I as I kept keep saying, you know, we can get through this with what we know, yeah. and get through it together. Even though it's, it's like a paradox. Even though we're in isolation. Uh, we can get through this together. Um, and it's, it's interesting, there's been a shift, I think, in technology in that, you know, before um, the, the pandemic, we were in a, a world that was more connected than it's ever been before. But yeah. People were lonelier. Yeah, um, yeah, I agree. Was, they were more disconnected physically, even though we were connected electronically, if you like. Yeah. And Good. now we've got this technology so that even though we're on isolation, the three of us can get together and, and literally we can have a chat to, to thousands of you around the world, which is fantastic. But it's around building this community. It's about building this collective where we can share, uh, where we can support each other. Um, and, you know, not only get through this, but come out, of this, whatever that may be, in a significantly better place. 
Yeah, yeah I agree. Yeah, so thanks guys for, for joining me. Uh, again, you know, wherever you are in the world, uh, lovely, lovely lot. And uh, as, I, as I say, I've used a, an Hawaiian kind of greeting at the end of each of these Facebook lives because there's no word in Hawaiian for goodbye. Um, the, all they have is the phrase ahui ho. And ahui ho means until we meet again. Oh, really? I think the Queen was, has been watching my Facebook lives because that's how she ended her speech the other day. <laughs> <laughs> Respect. David, just, just on behalf of all of your viewers, I would like to just say well done for showing up, well done for giving people the opportunity to consume other people's content as well as your own. I personally and Llewellyn think you've done a fantastic job and you know in our humble opinion you've always been the godfather of NLP, you know we've followed you for 15 years plus. So um, thank you very much for getting us on there. We're, we're massively grateful and we appreciate it. And, and we think you're doing a fantastic job with that. Right. Yeah, David, I, I just want to say as well, if it wasn't for six years ago when I came to your free workshop, I wouldn't have done all of the amazing things that I've done with my life, physically, emotionally, and financially. I just want to say for me personally, I respect you and appreciate you, my brother. Thank you, guys. Yeah. We really appreciate it. Thanks very much. Pleasure, brother. Thank you. Thank you.